investigator. You know, <laughs> somebody to watch you and somebody and to report to her, what is he doing? What is he doing? I don't trust that rascal. You know. But but you caused it. You caused that insecurity. Or you haven't stopped it from the previous, as my wife alluded to, that she came into the relationship with baggage. She brought it in. You didn't know that she packed up all that stuff and brought it with her. But she brought all that insecurity and that pain and that hurt with her, and it came into a relationship. And then on your honeymoon, it, it surfaced. You go, oh, my God, what did I get myself into? <laughs> Gee, it's too late. So now you got to figure ways and strategies on how to make her secure, how to love her, how to let her relax and be comfortable, and most of all, trust you. That's right. That's right. One of the things that is now a telltale are these phones that we all have, texting and calling people, and then your phone ring, and she's she feels because you are, because most people don't have a landline anymore, mm -hmm. so she feels it's okay, your phone is ringing, so she runs to get it, and you you skidding around the corner to grab it so that she doesn't pick it up. Uh -oh. And she's like, whoa, what's that? Or texts, texts come in, buzzing on your phone, and she wants to see it, and you're blocking it. Something's not right there. That should not be going on. Right. And so now she's really picking she's going through and women you shouldn't be doing the same thing either you should not have phones that you're hiding text or you're hiding uh, phone calls or you're doing something that's bringing about the jealousy as well so I always remember that security should be yours and mm. insecurity should never play in your marriage wow. very good <laughs> Now, as I said that I was giving these 10 issues that are drive the man out of the house, they're not necessarily in order, but every one of them is a, is a good a reason why a man would leave uh, because he's had too much of it. That's very good. Okay, and so number six, lazy. Oh, yeah. Oh, woman, woman, woman. Won't wow. keep the house clean. Mm. Well, what do you do about the, 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 the wife that says, hey, I work all day and everything. Uh, he should do all that. Well, let, let me deal with her at this point being okay. lazy. All right. She won't keep the house clean, whether she work or whether she doesn't. Your house still should be your, your castle. Mm. Laying around all day or going shopping and then not letting the house be a priority. And then argues with the husband if he says something to you concerning the issue. Mm -hmm. Now, even if she works, your home should be your castle. Uh, yeah. It really should. Even Absolutely. though I may spend eight hours on the job with other people, when I come to my home, I don't want to kick things out of the way or out, out of the door to get in my house. I don't want to open a closet door and everything fall out on me. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go to a bed and it's not made up. And I want I want to walk in my bedroom and see my bed made up and it's very beautiful. I, I want to see that. I want to be able to go in my living room. There's no clothes thrown on the sofa that's been there for weeks talking about I'm going to fold them. Mm -hmm. I don't want to... <laughs> I don't I want to go in, in, in the bathroom and I can't even sit down on my own toilet because it's nasty, but I'm the one that did it. Right. Or I can't get to my sink because I haven't cleaned it or my kitchen is full of dishes and all of that. That should not be. That's just, I'm talking to the ladies now. Right. Whether you work or whether you don't, that should not be. Now, if you were like that before you got married, if if your mom didn't teach you how to clean, you got to understand, a man is coming to into your life. He won you over. You won him over because he saw you looking all good. You were dipped when you went out the house. You looked all beautiful, but then he hadn't been in your house, so he didn't know. <laughs> he didn't know that when you got out of that dress, you just threw it on the floor. He didn't know when you did your makeup, all you did was threw it in the counter. On the counter, you never cleaned anything. You didn't keep anything organized. But then now, all of a sudden, I want to marry this woman. Then they get married, and there's a nightmare because he's like, oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't know this is what I was marrying. And so now he's got a problem. Right. So, I mean, this is something you find out. I know a lot of times, honey, you talk about, dating a person for a whole year 
Yes. To find out what they're like. You'll find that out in a week. <laughs> it doesn't take long before when he comes over to your apartment and you've shoved everything under the sofa. Yes. Shoved it in the closet and 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 just tried to wipe some things down. After a week or so, he's gonna notice. He's gonna notice the smell. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm just being honest. He's gonna notice. So he's he's gonna be gone before the year is out. Wow. There's no way in the world he's gonna stay in that. There's no way in the world, especially if he's clean. And even if he isn't clean, woman, he certainly expect you to be. Wow. So I'm just I'm just saying. That's good. I'm just saying. That's good. You were, you were one of the reasons why you were talking about uh, alluding to the fact that a year of dating, and, and the reason why I encourage you who are engaged or planning on getting married, because I know we're dealing with married couples, but if you're single and you're looking to get married, I want to encourage you to at least uh, date for a year. And the reason why I say a year is not because I'm trying to, uh, you know, say that you guys may or may not make it, but it's, it's significant because you can go through every holiday in, in every uh, form of, of, of weekends and different things for a year to find out w how that person operates and how they think. Right. And uh, you know how it is on Christmas Day, and you, you know how they are on Thanksgiving, and you know how they are on their birthday. You go through the full cycle with them, getting to know them. Very key in a relationship is getting to know them. And that year, that's a great time to spend days and holidays and birthdays and Christmas and Thanksgiving getting to know how they think and, and adjusting to them. Because you have to, there is some adjustment. Don't think you're going to go into marriage and you're going to stay the same. You can't do that. You have to make con some concessions. That's true. You know, so often people think, That's "Well, true. I get married, hey, hey, uh, it's going to be my way or the highway, or she going to follow me and do what I say do and everything." I ain't changing for her. Oh, you you'll be getting your papers sooner than you think. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to encourage you to do you who are single to make sure that you date for a year so you can learn that person so you can make a well-informed decision. That's true. Now, there are some exceptions in this laziness that you might have uh, married a lazy man and he doesn't care, so he's just as filthy mm. as she is. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> And I've walked into homes. You know, you and I have gone places being ministers, and I just was standing in the middle of the floor. Yeah, she would. They offer her a seat. She says, no, thank you. It's okay. <laughs> we won't be long. And see that the husband had no problem in a filthy home. She had no problem. Just move things out and sit down. And the things that we've experienced, they, those are some of the exceptions, that both of them may be that way. Right. If you choose to live like that and you're happy, don't invite anyone else to your house. You'll be fine. Okay? I just want to leave that with you. Well, and, and what can fine. happen, one can get inspired. <laughs> one can maybe go visit someone's home and, and right. uh, See they something. can get a hold of us. Yeah. Well, you know what? We, we're living like pigs. Right. You know, and go back. And, and so if that should ever happen to you and your wife want to change for, for various reasons, she see things different or the husband... Uh, wants to change, make that adjustment with each other. That's good. If a revelation comes and you say, wow, you know, we've been doing this like this. We've been smoking crack for 10 years. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we need to quit now. I'm just, that's the extreme. But I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying that when one come up with an idea to better, don't come against it. Support their idea of the change that they want to make. Stand with them and grow with them and work with them and, and help your life become productive. That's good. That's good. That's good. Number seven. Wow, we're doing good. We're doing excellent. Number seven is a good one. All right, let me hear it. When the wife makes more money than the man, Ooh. and she's in a better position financially and uses this against her husband. Ooh, that's a big one there. Throwing it up in his face. Yeah. She knew when she married the gardener that she made more <laughs> money than him. <laughs> wow. <laughs> 
I recall a quote women, some selfish women have said, and that is, what's yours is mine, and what's mine is mine. Wow. And that's what they do to destroy <laughs> marriages. So women, even if you do, because the corporate world is out there and it's free to all of us, there are as many uh, female lawyers as male. Yeah. There's as many female doctors now, surgeons, dentists, all this women have risen up yes. and they are making money. They're in the six figures. Their husband may only be in the, in the five figures, but if you choose, if you chose to marry him knowing that, and why would you now degrade him when it's your money, but you've divided it. Right. You got your own little separate account over here, and then you put a little bit of money in the account that the two of you are gonna use together, mm -hmm. but he can't touch this one. Right. We're not even talking about prenup. Mm -hmm. We're just talking about your decision. Right, and you know, this is so good because now, just looking at it from a, the perspective of the mentality of, of of how we think, just face it, the one who writes the paycheck or signs the check is the one who called the shots. Mm -hmm. In other words, the one who makes the most money and the one who uh, signs the paycheck tends to call the shots. So since that's the case, mm -hmm. You have to be sensitive to one another because that's degrading for a man to know that his wife makes more money than he does. And especially when she flaunts it and rubs it into his yeah. face. You get your check, baby? Yeah. How much is it? $850? That's all. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, what, what are we going to do with that? Uh, what are we going to do with that a little bit? Is that going to... That ain't gonna help us none. But she married him knowing this, and now you're flaunting this. But in she his got face. a raise now. I mean, that see, that's what messed her up. It was okay as long as she didn't get a raise. Everything was fine when they first started. But he didn't get a raise. But you. But she him got. Before. But she got a raise. Now she feeling all that did some in a bag of chips. Now his little peanut money here that uh, you know he's bringing to the table, she gonna let him know that look, uh, I just want you to know, uh, I, my, my money is on that jag. My, my tag, that, you see my name on that? That's my jag, you know. Uh, that's my car. Um, it, and it becomes my, 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 and that's dangerous in a marriage. And it's really embarrassing when they go out to dinner and she tape picks up the tab. That's yeah. your husband. Now, you thought, you didn't, the money situation didn't matter when you were loving him, when he was yours, when he was your bae. And now all of a sudden it's about money. Mm. That's, that's a problem. Yeah. Ladies, don't, somewhere it's going to lead to the next one, which is well, number eight. I'm not, I'm not going to go there yet. Oh, I'm yeah. saying it's going to lead to that because there is some kind of influence that's taking place because when you loved him, in that home, in the privacy of your home, it didn't matter whether you made five dollars and he made one. Mm -hmm. But when you got out into that corporate world, you allow something to influence you. And I will go to that next. But just before That's I do, wonderful. And I just want to uh, allude to the fact that a lot of times that can cause a man to begin to drink heavy mm -hmm. uh, because now his manhood is in question. Mm -hmm. Uh, his authority is in question. His self-esteem is in question. Definitely that. His self-worth is in question. And all of these now is, is, is he's needing to feel good and validate himself now. And so alcohol will begin or drugs will begin to help him. Are you saying that, you, that, that I pushed him to drugs? No. Are you saying I pushed him to alcohol? No. I'm saying that these are some of the traits that men have issues and problems with when women begin to make them feel less than. They start to build themselves up in the wrong way. 
very few go to God and pray. <laughs> very few. Very few seek they the Lord the in fasting and call on the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. They reach out to something else or someone else. And so I, I just want to encourage you there to be cautious. I just want to caution you in a relationship where the wife is making most of the money to be sensitive to where that that man is so that you don't drive him to drink. <laughs> again, that's good. And again, that's why I was saying that you loved him before when he didn't have anything. So you allow something to get in the way. And that leads us to number eight, hanging out with the girls. Oh. Whether they're married or whether they're single, when you're hanging out. Oh, for God's out, sake, they gotta, she got to hang out with married. The, it, in today's world, they're hanging out married and single. And mm. the influence is there uh, based on both of them, both whether they're married or whether they're single, and they're 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 comparing, they're talking, and uh, they're talking about. There, there's a movie that I was watching. I won't bring up the name of, but there's these four rich women. One's a, a gynecologist, one's an attorney, one's. Uh, the, but all f four of them are, are affluent. Uh, they're all single looking for a husband but can't find one because they are in, the men are intimidated by their positions. So turn it around and see if they were married. These four affluent women are married, but they're out there still exchanging ideas and talking, and one of them, may, husband, may make may not make this kind of money because somebody said, oh, I thought he was a, 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 a landscaper or I thought he was a garbage man or something. Mm -hmm. And so you married him because you loved him. Right. But now you put it out there and they're saying, girl, you know you make more money than that. And he only make that amount of money. Right, right. So they planted a seed in you. Mm -hmm. And that's Very when you good. go home with that mess. Wow, you would have that never is taken that, that is, home. That is so because good. Because you loved him. Hanging out with the wrong people. But you're people. hanging out with mm. the wrong people who are bringing down your marriage based on society and status. That is so Don't good. let that happen. If you married him because you loved him, I didn't care if he did pick your weeds. Mm -hmm. I'm talking. That didn't sound right. <laughs> The gardener. The gardener, okay. <laughs> um, you married him because you loved him. It didn't matter what he made. Right. But you allowed other influences to come in wow, and break that, down your marriage. That is very good. That, mm -hmm. that, is, that is really good. And so what I'm hearing my wife say is caution yourself of who you're friends. That's uh, right. Because you're a product of who you hang out. Mm -hmm. If you want to know yourself, just know who's your friend. Just know right. who you hang out with. That's right. That'll tell you who you are. That's right. Because we tend to hang out with people who influence us or we influence, or we hang out with people that we're comfortable with, and that tends to be who we are or who we desire to be or who, uh, how we are about ourselves. So, mm -hmm. so you can ask yourself the question, who, I want to ask you the question, who do you hang out with? Mm -hmm. Who is your friend? Who is right. your best friend? Right. Is it someone that is good for your life, that can help enhance your life, to encourage your life? Or is it someone that you hang out with that you and your husband fall out and you call him and say, uh, me and my husband fell out. Girl, I lead that man. I, I, I pack my bags and get out of that house now. Nah, you don't have to put up with that. And then she pack her bags and come over to your house. You, what you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> That's well, true. you said pack my bag. <laughs> you can't stay here, honey. You can't just stay <laughs> here. True. You know, but she pushed your buttons. That's what my wife mm -hmm. is is saying that they push your buttons. Yeah. And when they push your buttons, they can cause you a lifetime of misery. Yes, that's good. Learn to value that man, and don't ever, don't ever uh, lose that just because someone else is running this. You hold on to the very heart of your marriage the way you did when you found, when you first uh, found this man. I mean, you know, I'm not speaking scripturally here. I'm just saying when you fell in love with him, he was that man then, let him still be that man now. Wow, that's okay. good. Well, listen, we are just about out of time. We got about okay. five more minutes. All right. I so, uh, All right, we'll move on. Number nine,
putting your husband down in public. Wow. This will not only break him, but cause major problems at home. You never, ever, ever put your husband down in public. You never ridicule him. You never make him look bad or feel bad in public because you're feeling some kind of way. <laughs> Wherever that came from, it needs to go away, and he needs to address it. The very first time it happens, you cut that engagement real fast and say, honey, we need to go home and, and be very nice. And then when you get home, husband, you find out where that's coming from because if you let her get away with it that time, she'll try it again. And so number 10 also couples with that, talking about him to others. Wow. One day, one day while you're talking about your husband to somebody else, one day that somebody that you just told uh, something about your husband is going to go back and tell it. Right. Not only are they going to go back and tell it, they're going to probably go after him because they think that you don't want him anymore. Wow. So your trash has now become their the treasure. treasure. Whoa! Woo! That is unbelievable. Wow. Wow. Wow, so I you like better that. be very careful. You're trashing him. You're talking about him. That woman just sitting there. She's single. She looking at him. Mm -hmm. He's feeling all bad because he's not being loved. You trashed him. She treasured him. Wow. Number 10. And that is one. Well, we're just about uh, going to wrap it up, but it, just in conclusion to this whole thing has just been one. Let's give my darling Thank a wife a bit. That was really Thank you. Wow, that, that was Thank phenomenal. You. That is phenomenal. And so as we close out with number 10, I can definitely see where the paint, painting the picture that you don't want him. Right. And, he, and they see him. They don't know who he is. They just looking at the external, and uh, as far as they concerned, it's a good man. And they're looking at you like, why do you don't want him? Well, if you don't want him, you putting him down, you tearing him down, you saying he ain't this, he ain't that. But I don't see that. That that ain't what I see. She's not gonna tell you that. But just like my wife alluded to, then she's gonna say, wow, if you don't want him, and I need a man and I don't have a man, and I've been wanting a man, and there's a man, then why not I get this man? <laughs> and, and you know, it's wow. amazing, I think it was Steve Harvey that said it like this. Steve Harvey said that uh, women are like this. This uh, Men is like when they see a woman that they like or something, they say, wow, that's a nice, fine girl there. And they say, uh, women say, that's the man I'm going to get. <laughs> That's true. That's so true. And then they go after. So, so just as my wife alluded to uh, that want to be cautious, build your husband up. We're going to mm -hmm. close in just a few moments. But, and I want you who are watching, and I want to encourage you to email us at journeytogreatnessbc uh, at gmail.com. Or you can write, write us at 4732 Old Pineville Road, that's Charlotte, North Carolina, 28217. If you want to call us, or you can call us at 704-322-8010. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Got it right. And so we want, to, we want to connect with you. And if you're having problems in your marriage, feel free to email us. We'll respond to you and give you some tips and some encouragement. And if you're enjoying this broadcast, don't hesitate to write and call us or, or uh, let us know that you're enjoying the broadcast and let us know wherever you might be watching. And I want to give a shout out to my mom there that's in Detroit, Michigan there. Annie Walker, I want to say hello to her. Uh, let's give my wonderful mom a big God bless you. Yeah. And also, I want to give a shout out. I want to give a shout out to my son, who is in uh, Detroit, Michigan as well. Donnie, I want to give him, and Ebony and all my kids there, I want to give them a shout out. And also, I would be remiss if I did, did not, my grandchildren and, and my son in Florida, yes. uh, Roger David Smith and his wonderful wife, Mekiva, and my grandkids, name them real quickly. Brianna, Alyssa, and Nia. You're wonderful. Mm -hmm. we, we love you. So we got some awesome family there in Florida. We got some awesome family out in, in Detroit. And also, um, 
I have a daughter in Chicago. Yeah, well, mm, I want to say hello to Shekina. And then my friends out here in California, let's say hello to them. Give them a big, come on, y'all, let's give it up for California. Wonderful. Well, listen, we out of time. We got to go. We want to say we love you. Thank you for watching Journey to Greatness broadcast with Dr. Randall and Bradella Hall Walker. And we say we love you and we wish God's very best to you. Hi, I'm Dr. Randall Hall Walker. What a joy it is to come to you by way of television and share with you Journey to Greatness broadcast. If we're being a blessing to you, would you be so kind to consider going to our website and giving a generous gift so we can stay on the air? Go to fwccharlotte.com and click on Give and support the ministry so we can stay on the air. Thank you so very much and wish God's very best to you. Thank you.